Now, another way to play a chromatic scale is to kind of try to stay in one position rather than shifting like we just did. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, start on this fifth fret, go up my four notes there, and we already know that the next one higher is going to be here on this fourth fret. All right, but instead of shifting down and doing like we did before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this note with my first finger and then just move up my first finger one fret and again do my four fingers again. So I have, and when I reach here, I would have to reach back to this fourth fret and again I'm going to go first finger at the fourth fret. First finger, second, third, fourth. Then I go to the third string, same thing. I reach back, grab that note on the fourth fret, but then move my first finger up. All right. And here, just like the other one, I don't have to reach back because of the way the guitar is tuned. So between the third and the second string, I don't have to shift back. I'm just going to play it. My next note would be at that fifth fret. So that's the only string combination where I don't have to go back and grab a note. But then for the first string, I have to reach back, play this note here at the fourth fret, and then shift up. So I'd have. Now that kind of works out great when ascending, when going up, because it's kind of easy to take your finger and you know, reach back one fret and then move back into position. If you kind of think about a four fret area as a position, you, you might have played this kind of finger exercise before where you just play. All right. Well, that's kind of a chromatic scale, but not exactly because there's some of notes that are missing in that. If, if I'm truly playing the chromatic scale, I do have to reach back and grab that note that's out of position, that's out of that four fret area. And so kind of reaching back with my first finger to a note that's one fret lower than the position and then work my finger back into position. Now, Going back down, I could do the same thing. I could go and then take my first finger and move it down one fret like that. All right. But coming down, another way that you could kind of play this chromatic scale is to kind of reach for a note that's out of position one fret higher with my pinky. So watch this, if, as I come down. This time, I'm gonna play a note that's on the second string at the ninth fret. And then pinky, that's out of position, come down one fret to the note that's in position. All right, so. It's often easier to kind of play a note that's out of position going into position than it is to play one that's in position and going out of position. What I mean is if I'm going up, it's probably harder to do something like this, where I played that note with my pinky that was in position and then went out of position going up one fret. It's probably easier to play this note on the first string with my first finger that's out of position and then come into position. All right, so, and so let's just continue on down. So I go pinky out of position, pinky in position. Again, between my second and third strings, I don't need to um, do any adjustment because of the way the guitar is tuned. So. Fourth string, I gotta reach up one fret to the ninth fret. Back. 
pinky down to the eighth fret. Then on the fifth string, reach up one fret to the ninth fret. Scoot my pinky down one fret. Coming to the sixth string, up to the ninth fret with my pinky. Down to the eighth fret with my pinky. So the whole descending kind of version of this where I'm staying in position is going to be. And so, you know, one way that you can kind of play this is when going up, use where you're playing with your first finger. When you're coming down, do that little shift with your fourth finger. Now, it's not all set in stone which fingers you should use. The idea is just to kind of understand, get an understanding of how the neck works and how you might be able to play kind of going up one fret at a time. And you can use this in your lead guitar playing. It's not that you're just going to be kind of, you know, improvising with a chromatic scale, but you can do some kind of chromatic ideas where you're kind of connecting and going up one fret at a time. You might be riffing out and playing some pentatonic scales and then do a little run that's just some chromatic notes going up to kind of reach a particular note. And if you kind of understand how these chromatic scales work, you're going to have an easier time kind of negotiating that. All right. Have some fun with your new chromatic scales.